Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to continue the conversation that we began last lecture. Previously, we looked at the many tools that we can use to gather geographic data. But tonight, we're going to see how those tools can be used together to create really powerful statements about many of the things we'll examine in this course, just like we did with the forest cover change previously. Geographic data is used for a variety of reasons, like understanding problems, considering options, and assisting with decision making, and then measuring the effect of those decisions. As a result, spatial data, which is a synonym for geographic data, is used by a wide variety of people to accomplish different goals. Individual people will use geographic data to help navigate to work and to see if it's faster to take the subway or to drive their own car. Individuals may use spatial data to analyze school zones and property taxes or floodplains and crime in their area. Many businesses collect geographic data to examine demographic trends about future customers or potential employees. Businesses will also use spatial data to examine tax rates or to target marketing campaigns. Organizations may utilize geographic data to analyze quality of life metrics, as well as to map public health, education, or public safety services. Governmental agencies may use remote sensing to evaluate how urban or agricultural lands have grown or shrunk. They may use GPS to track the presence and migration of endangered animals. They may use spatial data to address air pollution. Governments are interested in statistics on crime and homelessness, which can influence where they may locate shelters, street lights and security cameras, or where greater police presence may be needed. Really, the uses of geographic data are limitless and really depend on the problem that is attempting to be addressed. So let's take a look at some specific examples that you may see throughout the course of this year. Let's start with a conversation about businesses and economic development. Walmart will use census data to determine where population is increasing and where it might choose to build new stores. So identifying areas with expanding population could be helpful. More people means more potential customers. But the United States, along with many developed countries, have populations that are getting older. So maybe you want to start a private nursing home, and you might want to know which areas are likely to need them. But what if you're opening a series of factories and you want to keep the wages low so you can profit more? Maybe if there are lots of younger working age people, you might be able to save costs. So you look for the world region with the youngest median age. So you open your factories in Africa where there are lots of young working age people. And you might use GPS to track the shipments of your raw materials to your factories and the finished products to market, again, so you can help to maximize your profits. But if you're a governmental agency, you might notice that many parts of the world lack access to basic services like safe drinking water or electricity. Aerial photographs can help to determine which areas to invest public money toward improving the level of economic development. What other observations can you make about parts of the Earth by looking at this remotely sensed image? Shifting gears, how might geographic data be used within the realm of politics. Well, every 10 years, the census is conducted to count the population of the United States. That poll helps to determine regions where population has changed, but for a different reason than Walmart might be interested in. The distribution of members of the US House of Representatives 
are adjusted based on population change. States that lost population, like California, will have fewer members in Congress, and states that gained population, like Texas, might have more. Nevada gained a new seat in Congress after the 2010 census because we gained a significant population. But then we have to redraw the lines for districts so that they have roughly equal population. Here's what they looked like before 2010, and here's what they look like after. But geographic data isn't just about redistricting in Congress. Polls and surveys help politicians understand what is important for the people they represent. Media reports provide data that we use when we decide who to vote for or if we should write an email to our member of Congress. Politicians and their campaigns use geographic data to determine where to place those campaign signs in hopes that the most people see them and their message. Our final example tonight is going to focus on culture and how geographic data can help us to understand different aspects associated with it. Travel narratives are a great qualitative source to start our conversation about culture because these often take a very broad view of an area. They can help us understand the culture as well as major cities. They can help us know the language that is spoken or the religion that is practiced in an area. It offers tremendous insight into an area's culture. But reading about an area is different than seeing an area yourself. Knowing what language is spoken is different than having a conversation with someone who speaks it. Field observations and photographic analysis are tremendous resources as they produce first-hand accounts from an experience at a particular location. When people move, they bring much of their culture with them. So when Chinese immigrants began to cluster on the west coast of the United States in cities like San Francisco, they brought their culture with them. Oftentimes, people who migrate will cluster near family members or other people who speak the same language or practice the same religion. In short, people who share their culture. These form what we will call ethnic enclaves. You've probably seen or heard examples before, places like Chinatown or Little Italy. Geographers look for signs of how these residents alter their neighborhoods to reflect their cultures, values, and traditions. These ethnic enclaves tend to have unique architecture, as well as businesses that may cater to residents of that community, like grocery stores that sell specific foods, or travel agencies that offer options to specific locations. But when geographers combine qualitative data, like our photographs, with quantitative data, we can address other concerns as well. Photographs don't necessarily tell us about the quality of life for residents of that community. But if a specific ethnic enclave has higher rates of poverty or unemployment, government agencies can work to expand opportunities in that area. Perhaps they open a new school or offer tax benefits to promote job growth. Tonight's lecture was intended to give you just a little taste of how geographic data can be used by many people for many different reasons. Hopefully, it opened your mind to how much of our world can be studied through a wide variety of geographic data and patterns. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you back in class.